Olode the Hunter Becomes Oba, a Nigerian folk tale. There was a hunter in the land, and bad luck dogged him. He had nothing in the world except the hut he lived in on the edge of the village, his gun, and a single cloth to wrap around his loins. He was so poor that he had never even been able to take a wife. His relatives, well, some had gone away and some had died. Poor Alode was simply alone. In the village, people didn't even acknowledge that he had a name. They merely called him Alode, meaning hunter. Alode went hunting one day. He followed the tracks of the game. But he caught nothing. He went deeper and deeper into the forest. He went farther than he had ever gone before because the trees were large and the bushes were thick and it was so dark. Alode struggled through the thick underbrush and waded through the swamps, but he still found no game. He got so discouraged. He sat down to rest. He closed his eyes for a moment, but when he opened his eyes, Alode saw a fierce-like, man-like creature standing before him. He sprang to his feet, but the creature said, Put away the gun. I am Aligba, king of the bush. Alode quickly put away his gun. And Aligbo said, You man, what brings you here? Alode said, I am a hunter. I followed the game tracks. There were no game to be found, and I am hungry. I must find meat to eat. I must find skins to sell. Therefore, I pressed my way into the bush. And I arrived at this place. Aligbo said, Indeed you are poor. It meets the eye. The men talked. They smoked together. And Alode spoke of his misery. I am alone. I have no son. I have no wife. My family, they are scattered and gone. Good fortune eludes me. I have no ointment even for the sores on my legs. It is this way with me. Aligbo said. Yes, it is visible. And they smoked a pipe. They smoked in silence. Say no more, Aligbo said. The king of the bush arose at last. He put out the fire from the pipe and he said, Hunter, to the most miserable person, there must come at least one good thing. Therefore, follow me. Alode rose. He followed Aligbo to a great tree standing among smaller trees. When Aligbo said, Throw down your loincloth. Alode threw it down. Aligbo said, throw down your gun. Alode threw it down. Then Aligbo struck the great tree with his hand and a door opened. Inta, Aligbo said. And Alode entered and the door closed behind him. Alode found himself at the gate of a large town. People were waiting for him. They welcomed him with dancing and hand clapping. Oh, they brought clothing for him and covered his naked body. They placed him in a carrying chair and carried him into the town. A servant held a large parasol over his head to shield him from the sun. A drummer went ahead of the procession beating out signals that said, The Oba, our king has arrived. The Oba, our king has arrived. The Oba, our king has arrived. They carried Alode to the king's compound. There was a wall. 
And inside, many, many, many houses were inside that wall. The procession stopped and the elders of the town came and touched their heads to the ground. One of them, the oldest one said, O oh Lord day, we receive you as our new Oba. The town and the land around it are yours. You are our father. You are our father. You will dispense justice. You will dispense charity. You will govern. All things that belong to an Oba are yours. Only one thing. Only one thing. Hear me, O. Oh. Only one thing is forbidden. To a low day, it seemed like a dream. He said, what is forbidden? The old man said, inside the third house, there is a carved door. The room behind it must never, must never, must never be entered. Do you accept this condition? I accept, said Olode. There was feasting, dancing, and music. An animal was sacrificed. A low day was proclaimed Oba. Messengers went out beating iron gongs to announce the event everywhere. The days came one after another, and a low day did the things that a king is expected to do. He ruled the people. He dispensed charity for the people. He collected taxes from the people. He judged the lawsuits that were brought before him. He ate and poverty fell away from him. Alode chose a wife. He had children. All was finally well for Alode. But now that all was well, he remembered, he remembered how it used to be when he couldn't even buy a small gourd of palm wine for himself. So he ordered that palm wine to be brought to him and he drank much of it. When it was gone, he called for more of it. He came to a place where he only thought of palm wine. Instead of caring for the people, he drank palm wine. The days went by. Alode forgot everything but his drinking. When he walked, he staggered from his own drunkenness. And one day, in his drunkenness, he entered the third house and stood in front of the carved door. And Alode said, Am I not the Oba? Who can forbid me and forbid anything to a king? <laughs> Is not the land mine? And everything in this land is mine. Is not the house mine? Hi, <laughs> it is mine. Oh, therefore the door is mine, and I will, <laughs> I will open it. He pushed against the door, and it opened. It was dark beyond. A load a stabbed across the threshold, and the door closed behind him. He looked back, there was nothing there. No house, no town. All around him, there was nothing but forest. He looked at himself and realized that he was naked. On the ground at Alode's feet were his gun and his old ragged loincloth. Oh, Alode put the ragged loincloth around him. He searched for the town. He looked left. He looked right. He looked behind. But there was absolutely nothing. 
So it was that a low day, the hunter, found good fortune, but he lost it. There is a saying among the Nigerian people, the hunting dog must listen to the hunter's horn. Otherwise, the forest will devour him. And thus it was with a low day. He did not listen. He accepted the condition when he became king. Then, in his palm wine drunkenness, he went through the forbidden door and the forest devoured him.